Hi friends, uh, I just want to say thank you for coming back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you make my YouTube channel a part of your YouTube family. I want to talk a little bit about scraps and what we do with those scraps. I did one video in particular called Scraps, Scraps, Scraps. A lot of you really enjoyed that particular video. And I'm wanting to do another one just to kind of just to show you how I plan out my scrap usage. If you watch Scrap, Scrap, Scraps, and I can put a link up above to that video so that you can see that, you will see that I did use a particular color family, if you want to call it that. I put together certain colors that I like together. I think a lot of us feel sometimes like when we when it comes to the scraps that we need to do something kind of like a crazy quilt. Um, you just grab scraps, whatever scraps that you have, and just start sewing them together to make a quilt. And it really just comes out um, basically like a crazy quilt. That's what my grandmother used to um, call them. And, and in her crazy quilt, there was fabric from every project she's ever done. This is just an example of some of the scraps that I have, but you know, you get colors, um, you just get a menagerie of colors. And Doing a crazy quilt is is just fine. Personally, I I like to put together color families, not just throw them together in a haphazard kind of way. I, I like to plan it out a little bit and and use it in such a way that when someone looks at it, they don't they don't just say, oh well, God, that's that's a lot of scraps. <laughs> You used a lot of scraps to make that, and that's just a personal preference. So this is something that I did a couple of years ago, and on this one, it's not so much a color family as it is jewel tones. I had a lot of scraps of fabric, and I, I shouldn't say a lot because I really didn't have a whole lot. I liked the colors because they were all in jewel tones, and there was a lot of um, batiks and, and such in there. And so when I put that together, I had a limited amount, but I wanted the jewel tones and I made, you can see, very specific shapes after I pieced them together in a more random pattern and then cut the, that random pattern into a more specific pattern and then put it together with the white background. I'm going to do um, that today as I'm going to show you some colors that I pulled from my scraps that I felt went together. Pretty much the same way when you're putting together fabrics for any type of quilt that you have in mind, you go through a color choosing process. Whatever your process is, you use that. Well, you can do the same thing with your scraps. And sometimes it takes a little while to gather up enough scraps. One of the things that I find when I'm taking my scraps and I'm putting them together randomly, I'm wanting to do shapes with those that are large enough to show a lot of the colors in that particular section. You don't want to put a, together a bunch of scraps that you end up cutting into, let's say, two inch squares. It wouldn't come across as nicely as it does if you were to do like a larger shape or a larger square or a larger rectangle. I'm deciding to use a rectangle that has been cut on the diagonal. One part, one portion of that rectangle is scrap piecing. The other half of that rectangle is in a solid color. Um, you don't want to take away from the beauty of the colors that you put together when you put together your scraps. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell. You can get those um, notifications then every time I put a new video out. Love to have you join us and on this journey. And also, if you, if you use Facebook, please be sure to check out my Facebook page called Heidi Creates 1965. 1965. And um, join that page. Um, my goal there is to really make that a social network where we can come together, ask questions, share what we're making. Other people can be inspired by your creativity as well. So um, hang out with us today and um, we'll see you on the other side. When it comes to making scrap quilts or any type of scrap fabric,
project. I tend to be a person that likes to use colors that go together. And that's just a personal preference. You know, it doesn't mean that's right or it's wrong or you don't do it. I'm just telling you what I personally, personally like. So I have a lot of yellows and grays and golds and, and part, um, and some of the things I like to do is also throw in some other colors that maybe aren't in the main colors. Like I have a lot of yellow and stuff going on here in the gray. There's this little teal in here. So I might throw in, you know, a splash of teal here and there. Um, I also noticed that one of the, you know, this, there's a, one of these that has like a minty, oh, the owl kind of has a minty green, a green color that I think the, this will go good. I don't have much of this, but the, so this would be a really good way to use this one up is just to throw this in here. So um, I'm sure most of you have seen, you know, videos on how to do uh, crumb quilts, scrap quilting. Um, this one I am going to, I'm not going to do raw edges on this one. I'm going to make um, seams with all of this. And I'll, I'll just show you a little bit of what I do, but not just a full tutorial making the actual scraps. It's, this is about how to, you know, make certain blocks or shapes out of your crumb quilt piecing. So um, I'll go ahead and get set up to do that. Until I actually get some pieces sewn together, I don't really bother with pressing. They come out of my, my scrap bag pretty wrinkled. But I'm, I'm like a lot of people and I like to start out with, um, you know, one particular piece that's um, a long strip. And then to that, I will take pieces of other fabric with the right sides together and just start sewing these together. I don't worry so much about if there's not a perfectly cut edge, I'll make a straight edge. But I do use I do use a um, quarter inch seam allowance, and then I I will just sew down the long length and just keep adding pieces. Long chain of scrap pieces sewn together, and if it goes off, that's okay. And let's see here. The um, plan out colors or anything like that. I just grab, and this piece is pretty long. But one of the things you can do after you've sewn these together is is actually cut them apart so that it's um, you know so this isn't two long strips together. I can cut them into smaller strips or smaller pieces. And it's okay that this strip has suddenly gotten much narrower. Just keep adding to it. This owl fabric is pretty cute. It's a little bit too long, so I think I'm going to go ahead and just cut it so it'll fit on here a little better. Do a little bit of this B fabric here. Now, I could actually keep sewing and you know, just add another long strip and keep going. But just to show you, um, you know, what I do with this, I'll go ahead and do, cut this apart. I've pressed these out, and whenever, whenever I have a piece that maybe um, that is angled, I like to try and do a continuation of that angle just to create interest in the piece. And then cut that off. I'll even say this tiny little scraps. I, I am not a discriminator of scraps. So I'll just continue cutting these, and you can actually pull out your rotary cutter and and start cutting these too, because this is this is probably a little bit bigger than what I would use, although it doesn't have to be. Um, can actually sew onto it and then cut more off of it too. And this piece has you know a little jagged thing right there, so I'm gonna just cut that off. Try not to make any difficult angles to sew. I mean, you could certainly do it if you feel so challenged, <laughs> but um, just try and create some straight angles or straight lines for yourself. So I'll go ahead and finish cutting this up and then we'll start piecing more together. So I have a shorter um, strip here and I'll start sewing onto that. And I don't want all my straight edges, you know, don't want everything to go the same direction. Let's go crosswise as well. The things that I try to, try to do is, is not duplicate 
the same fabric right next to each other. Let's see if I have something I can, and actually, even though I try not to do these long skinny pieces, it's okay if you do, just use up the end of that piece. Yeah. Now, just because I came to the end of that does not mean I have to lift up and stop. I can add some more pieces, so keep going. This is the finished piece with all those scraps and cut a few of the squares out. You can kind of make it any shape you want. If you have in mind already what type of sampler or quilt or project that you want to make with this, make it to the size that would make it the best for cutting. I'm actually cutting these first into four and a quarter inch strips. Line the edges up here, get myself a nice straight edge, then cut myself a four and a quarter inch strip. And from that strip, I'm cutting these shapes right here. I've made a paper template that I've taped to my ruler. Get as many of these as I can out of it. Whatever scraps I have left that I can't use for this, like here's one here, you know, these, I will save for another project. I'm going to be showing you in a future video things that you can do with all these little scraps here. That'll be really fun and actually make for some really fun Christmas gift ideas. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting these into four and a quarter inch strips. And um, yeah, and then I'm also going to be doing the same thing with a either white, a probably white or black, but I, it, I'm going to try it out first. We'll look at it together, but I'll be doing the same with either white or black fabric to add to this. Just wanted to show you what I ended up with. I have this particular four and a half inch strip, which is, it's a little over 23, 24 inches long. And then this one I won't be able to use for this project, but again, that I will keep in the um, scrap scrap. <laughs> um, pile and then this one I have I have oh goodness probably about 12 inches of usable and obviously anything like this will be saved for other projects. To cut these um, with my template out I have to actually have a square end so I make one end of my strip um, squared off on the end and then I just lay this right over it and line everything up real good and then I'm, I cut it at that 45 degree angle right there. And I will cut, I'll get at least two of these out of this particular strip. I just wanted to show you that with this particular one, you know, I just cut right where this shape, this template is, I just cut a piece off of there. But now this is actually the opposite direction of what I needed. So if I turn this around, and I know that from this end to the bottom squared end is six and a half inches. I just actually put my, the width of my ruler is six and a half inches. So I just put the tip right on that, square up the ruler with that tip, and then I just cut straight across the bottom, and that's how I get my triangles. I was able to get nine of these uh, from my scraps. And the things that you could do is you could actually take, if you needed more, take your scraps from these, from this particular project, and start sewing those together and get more, you know, pieces to, to make some more. But I think eight is all I need. So I'm going to start with that if I have to piece more of these together to get more, depending on what I decide to do in the, in the long run. Um, we'll see what happens. But um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and check and see if I want to do white or black with this. I've, I've got both colors. It's kind of springy though, so I'm not sure. We'll look at it. There it is with the black background, and then here it is with the white background. And I just can't help but just keep going back to the black. I think the black just really makes those colors pop. And um, yeah, I think I've made up my mind. Black it is. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the black into four and a quarter inch strips and then cut with my template. With the black, because there's no piecing in it, it's very thin, it's very easy to stack and cut more than one at a time. I actually be able to cut, the way I have it folded, I'll be able to cut four at a time, and which is great. Um, I didn't do that with, um, you know, the scrap pieces just because there's just so many so much joinery it just doesn't lay down very well against itself so with these I'll just go ahead and um, um, square off one end and I'll be able to cut four at a time
I want these to be actually long rectangles and so I'm going to be sewing on that 45 degree angle and to do that obviously right sides together and then the corners need to overlap if you've done any kind of um, joining of your like when you're making bias um, or binding strips whatever you usually join those on the angle so you just want a little bit of an overlap on um, each corner um, I'm going to sew that with a quarter inch uh, seam allowance. I'm going to string pieces together and then I'll show them to you once I have them all done. One of the things that I wanted to point out as you're sewing this, just remember that so much of this is on the diagonal. So just be really careful not to stretch or distort this as you're sewing it. You want to keep everything nice and flat and keep its shape. I also like to sew the pieces together with my scrappy piece on the top and that's just so that I can make sure that all of my seam allowances are laying down the correct way. I'm trying to eliminate as much bulk as possible, I'm trying to keep this as flat as we can so that it has a very neat appearance. Because of all of the seam allowances that are in the pieced scraps, this new seam allowance is going to want to be on the dark side um, just because of that and so go ahead and make sure that you press your seam allowance to the side that does not have all of those so now we have this really nice looking rectangle and I'll go ahead and press all of those and show you how I'm going to piece these together now that I have all eight sewn together what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them in pairs and take the first one and flip it 180 degrees the colored sides go together and so I'm going to put the right sides together quarter of an inch seam allowance down here on the color side. I sewed my four pairs together and now I have four blocks. The way that I remember how to arrange these is such. Here I've got this, I'm going to look at this particular black one here. I'm going to take the next square hold it in the same position as that one and then moving clockwise a quarter turn clockwise that's how I'm going to turn that block and then put it above it so with the last one that I just laid down I'm taking this square or this shape same as the black underneath it turning it clockwise one quarter turn and putting it to the right of it so basically everything is moving in a clockwise motion here. And then this one, same direction as that, quarter of a turn, moving it to the last, last spot below it. And this is how your block should look. So I'm going to go ahead and sew those two together, then these two, chain blocking or chain sewing it. And then once those are together then I'll put both of these this way and sew all the way across matching the seams in the in the center there is the completed sampler what I just really wanted to show you is that when you're using scraps and you're piecing them together making a crumb quilt so to speak is that you can actually make something that looks very purposeful and doesn't look like it's done with scraps you know, like it's a beautiful collage of color. And that's what you get when you put this color family together and then you have shapes that you cut out and then combine with the solids or with a more um, contrasting background. And you can get some really beautiful results. So I hope you enjoyed that and hope it inspires you to um, take your scraps to the next level. I hope everyone is staying healthy, staying happy, and until next time, have a great one. Bye for now.